Hi, let's talk about the extraocular muscles. In this video, we'll discuss the attachments, actions, and innervations of the extraocular muscles. The extraocular muscles are sometimes referred to as extrinsic eye muscles. These are muscles found outside of the eye, which largely affect either the movement of the eye or the superior eyelid. Their proximal attachments are either within bone of the orbit or on the common annular tendon, which is found at the posterior aspect of the orbit. Their distal attachments are largely on either the sclera or in the case of levator palpebri superioris on the superior eyelid. And most of these muscles therefore are going to affect gaze or the direction that the eyes are pointed. Their actions can sometimes be rather complex and that's the result of orbital asymmetry. Recall that the orbit is a pyramid with its long axis directed posterior medially. What that means is that some muscles, such as let's consider uh, the superior rectus muscle here, when it contracts, it's going to have both a posterior vector and a medial vector. And so, Oftentimes, the rectus muscles will adduct or move the gaze inwards because of that. We'll see that the oblique muscles, superior and inferior oblique, will have lateral components to their vectors, which will abduct gaze. Most of the extraocular muscles are innervated by cranial nerve 3, which is the oculomotor nerve aptly named. The superior oblique muscle is innervated by the trochlear nerve and the lateral rectus by the abducens nerve. So let's start with levator palpebri superioris, which is kind of the odd duck in that it's the only extraocular muscle which does not attach to the sclera. It runs from the apex of the orbit down to the superior tarsal plate. When activated, it elevates the upper eyelid. It's innervated by the oculomotor nerve. Now there is also a tiny component of smooth muscle behind its aponeurosis, part of that tarsofascial layer, that's known as the tarsal muscle or superior tarsal muscle. This muscle is under autonomic control and when stimulated by the sympathetic component of the autonomic nervous system, these are fibers from the superior cervical ganglion, this smooth muscle contracts and helps to maintain the patency of the palpebral fissure by elevating that superior eyelid. The remainder of the muscles that we'll discuss will all attach to the sclera and move the eye. So the first is the superior oblique muscle. This has an attachment uh, at the apex of the orbit and it has a distal attachment on the superior sclera of the eye, but it has a rather unique pathway to get there. So let's, let's look at this illustration. We can see the belly of the superior oblique muscle runs out lateral, I'm sorry, runs out medial to the superior rectus muscle and its tendon goes through a little cartilaginous loop known as the trochlea, same name as the uh, nerve that innervates it and it wraps around like so. So here we can see the trochlea and we can see that tendon of the superior oblique muscle running out and attaching to the sclera of the eye. So it is superior to the medial rectus muscle and medial to the superior rectus muscle. Now when the superior oblique muscle contracts, that tendon is going to pull the eye that way. And as a result of that, it's going to abduct and depress gaze. So gaze is going to slightly go outwards and downwards. Now the superior oblique muscle 
also has an element of intorsion to it. Intorsion is a rotation of the eye. In particular, it's a rotation of the superior pole of the eye medially. The superior oblique muscle is the only extraocular muscle innervated by the trochlear nerve. And the fact that its tendon goes through the trochlea is very consistent with allowing you to remember that fact. The next muscle we will discuss is the superior rectus muscle. The superior rectus muscle is found just inferior to levator palpebri superioris. Its proximate attachment is on the common annular tendon at the posterior medial aspect of the orbit. Its distal attachment is on the sclera at the superior pole of the eye. When the superior rectus muscle contracts, it's going to both elevate and adduct the eye. So the eye goes upwards and inwards, or gaze goes upwards and inwards. This is because, again, the orbit is asymmetrical. It's going to have that component as well as that vector component to the force. The superior rectus muscle, like many other extraocular muscles, is innervated by cranial nerve 3, the oculomotor. Next is the medial rectus. The medial rectus also originates from the common annular tendon, and it's going to insert on the sclera of the medial side of the eye. The medial rectus muscle, owing to the fact that the asymmetry of the orbit doesn't affect its pathway, is going to adduct gaze, or move it medially. Here we can see that this is medial because we can see the lacrimal lake there. The medial rectus muscle is innervated again by cranial nerve 3, oculomotor. Next we have the lateral rectus. The lateral rectus, like the medial rectus, takes its proximal attachment from the common annular tendon, and its distal attachment is at the lateral aspect of the sclera. Again, its actions are not confounded by the shape of the orbit. When the lateral rectus muscle pulls, gaze is going to abduct or move laterally. The lateral rectus muscle is innervated by the abducens nerve. One way of remembering this is that the abducens nerve abducts gaze, lateral rectus. Next, we have the inferior rectus muscle. The inferior rectus muscle, like all the other rectus muscles, takes its proximal attachment from the common annular tendon. Its distal attachment is on the inferior pole of the sclera. And when activated, it is going to depress and adduct gaze. It also will be involved in extorsion. Extorsion is the movement of the superior pole of the eye outward, or the inferior pole of the eye inward. The inferior rectus muscle is innervated by the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three. So both superior and inferior rectus muscles are going to adduct gaze. Let's take a look at the inferior oblique now. The inferior oblique muscle takes its proximal attachment from the orbital surface of the maxilla. Its distal attachment is kind of lateral and inferior on the sclera. And when it pulls, when it activates, it's going to abduct and elevate gaze. So the eye will move outwards and upwards. The inferior oblique muscle is also going to be involved in extorsion. So one thing that, uh, that I like to think about is that rectus muscles, 
So we're talking about superior and inferior rectus muscles are going to be adductors. Oblique muscles are abductors. So obliques abduct. Also, superior rectus and superior oblique muscles lead to intorsion, whereas inferior oblique and inferior rectus muscles lead to extorsion. The inferior oblique, like most of the other extraocular muscles, is innervated by the oculomotor nerve. So we've discussed the extraocular muscles, their proximal and distal attachments, their actions, as well as their innervations. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.